Hey teachers, so today we are going to learn how to make our own Google Classroom header in Canva. So Canva is an online web, online website slash app, it's kind of both, but you can use it on a mobile app, I believe. I have not done that personally, but I have heard other people talk about that, so I can't really speak as much to that, but I use it almost every day on the computer because I use it for content creation, for blogging, for resources for teaching and now for you guys. So without any further ado, let's learn how to make a Google, a Google Classroom header in Canva. I don't know why guys, I have such a hard time saying Google like out of all the words, but okay. So I'm gonna share my screen and I'm just gonna go to all designs, share audio, share. Okay, so now I'm logged into Canva. And if you don't already have an account, I actually have a link on the resource that says Canva membership inside of the Google Classroom crash course. So if you go in from there, you can find the link. And if you use my link, you actually get one free credit after you create your first design. So definitely worth signing up. Now you do get a lot of access to free stock photos, templates, and elements on the free account but you get a little more if you do a premium a premium account. For me, it is totally worth it to upgrade just because of how often I use it. But if you think you're only going to use it seldomly, definitely check out the free one. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go up to the top here where it says create a design. So I'm gonna click on that. And as you can see, it already saved some of the templates that I've used previously, but we're gonna go ahead and just type in so you can see how the search works. I'm gonna type in Google and it's going to populate some options. This is your Google Plus header in case you do that social media platform through Google. I don't really use it. I don't know if I know anyone who uses it, but we're gonna go to Google Classroom header and it's going to open up a new tab. Let me just make sure it's showing up for you and let me stop this one because it's still just showing here. I'm gonna switch tabs for a second. New tab, Untitled Design. And I'm gonna switch that to full screen so you can see what I'm doing. Awesome, okay. So as you can see, I have a whole bunch of templates up here to the left. I am going to say, just be careful about the licensing rights. You're definitely welcome to start with one of those templates. If you're going to be selling on Teachers Pay Teachers or Amped Up Learning or any of those other platforms or even on your own website, you don't just want to change like two things of someone else's design, call it yours. That's when you start getting onto crossing the lines of copyright infringement and stealing intellectual property. So definitely make sure if you're going to sell any of yours that you create your own template um, and don't use photos unless you have the rights to them. So I happen to have the unlimited access to photos here. That's why you see that little infinity button. And so I have the licensing to use all of those in commercial materials. But if you don't have that, and don't just use Google search images, and we can go over a little bit more about where you can find those um, at another time. But for now, we're just talking about the Google header. So um, I actually don't even use those templates. I have my own templates, but I'm gonna start from scratch to show you how easy this is. So I'm going to go to photos, I'm gonna click on that. And of course, this is only if you have the unlimited access. If you don't have unlimited access, you're gonna have to have your either your own photos that you've taken, like it could be a picture of your classroom or it could be a picture of your students or it could be another, maybe like a, a layout that you like, okay? And I'm going to go to reading, just type that in for my photo search and it's going to give me a whole bunch of different stock photos I can use. This one's really cute. You can see all the kids are reading there so I'm just gonna drag it over to the screen and you kind of have to hit it there perfectly so that it fills the whole thing um, staying at the same quality ratio wise. And then you can see, you could just drag it to fit the template. I'm gonna click it right there. I think that's pretty good. Now keep in mind when you're making your own header that the Google Classroom information is gonna be up here on the top left hand side. So you don't wanna put any text or anything there that you want to be super blocked. So I'm actually gonna drag them down just a little bit more. So that way you can still see her face. Um, over here would be a good place to put your logo if you have one. Uh, if you don't have a logo or if you just want to put like your class name, that's fine too. I have previously uploaded it, so I have that here and I'm going to move it over. Um, but for you, you might want to put, you know, your class name. Like um, like if I was doing this for my class, I might say Miss Roberts class or 
um, my elementary school, or maybe you want to put your, your school's logo. It would be the Jayhawks, for example. Okay, so you're going to put your logo up there. As you can see, there's pink lines here that tells you where you should put it for best design ratios. Usually they try to put it in a center square so that things don't get cropped off by certain previews. So I'm just going to put it up in the upper right hand corner there. And I'm going to go to elements and I'm going to find a simple rectangle. Let's pick, let's pick this one. And actually, let's see if I can, okay, cool. So see, some of them are colored and some of them are transparent in the middle. This one is a full fill. So I'm actually going to click on colors. And what I really like about Canva is I have different branding for different things. Um, populated over here. I actually have an entrepreneurship club that I lead and so I've done a lot of work with them and so I have all these different color palettes there for other little businesses and what I'm going to do because I have certain uh, brand colors for Teach Blog Travel I am going to I'm make that best color and I'm going to expand this here just by see I'm just holding the left click button down stretching it and I'm gonna put right there in the middle, the lines just guide, guide me. There we go, right in the middle. I'm gonna make it actually a little bit bigger. And there we go, okay. And I'm going to actually go up here and you see where this gradient is. That tells you how transparent it's going to be. I'm gonna make it a little bit transparent so I can still see those kids' faces, but not so much that it clashes with that. So I have a couple of options for text. I can add a heading, subheading, or a little body of text, or I can go through these font combinations that are already together. They already look really good. They've already been sort of tested with the market, so people like them. And so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna start with this one, but then I'm gonna make it my own. So I'm actually gonna make this text, I don't like to use pure black for text fonts. So I'm gonna go with a dark gray. I'm trying to get a little darker actually. There we go. I'm gonna change this one as well. And I think I'm also going to change the font. And you see these come when you're using the templates already grouped together, so you're going to want to ungroup those. And I actually use Salima pretty frequently, but I'm gonna to go to fonts here, so you see the button here, and it loads all these fonts. Now, if it has a crown there, it means it's a premium feature or that there's a royalty for it. So if you have a free membership, you can just pay as you go and only pay for different features you use. Or if you wanna upgrade to the premium account, then you can have access to all the different ones. To me, it's super worth it. Um, but if you're not gonna use it all the time, I can see why you just want the free account. And that's totally fine too. You can do lots of things with it. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna delete that one. I think we really need it. I'm gonna keep it simple. I'm gonna say, Reading and ELA, and I'm going to expand the text box. Actually, yeah, I'm gonna make it a little bigger too, so it fills in more space. I'm gonna align it up so it's not off-centered. And actually, I'm gonna change that to an ampersand because I think it looks a little better. Maybe I'll even stretch it out. Let's see. And this is honestly a lot of it too. I, I mean, I'm just talking, kind of talking to myself here, but I'll just talk myself through and figure out, does that look good? Does this look better? And also keeping in mind all the other elements I have there. Okay. And that's right in the middle, but the ampersand's kind of off center. So I'm going to move that to the middle. All right, so that's a pretty simple one. I mean, there's definitely more that I could have done, less I could have done. I'm actually gonna move that because I don't like it blocking your face. Um, but that that's pretty much it. And then once you have it the way you like it, you can go up to here where it says publish, and then it's going to give you different options for how to share it. You can present it. That's if would be really good if you're designing a presentation, which was, that's one of the templates as well. You can share it directly to a Facebook page, Twitter account, or email account if you have it linked to that or you can just download it. I prefer to download it because I like saving everything I've made. Um, don't mess with the size because it's going to already be at the size, the dimensions of the template for Google Classroom header. Um, you don't want a transparent background for this, but for most, most designs you probably would, but for this one you don't. So we're gonna go click download. It's gonna download it as a PNG file. 
depending on your internet, could take a minute. Okay. And, oh, I didn't change the name. So if you want to change the name, there's a box right up here where you can do that to say it before. I didn't do that. Sometimes I don't even do that. I click on it and see if I like it. And then um, if I do, then I save it. And it looks pretty good. Um, so yeah, and that's that's just a basic one. And if I you know, wanted to take a little more time with it today, there are so many other things you can do. Um, but I know that a lot of us don't have that kind of time. And I know that you just might want to go on to Teachers Pay Teachers and buy one, and you can. I mean, in my store, I have several that are available for sale. They're all only a dollar each. And I even have some that are free. So if you can't pay for that right now and you just need to get a classroom done and set up, then you can do that. And um, I'll make sure that you have that link so that you can go on and find that. Otherwise, I hope this video was helpful. Um, be sure to subscribe to the channel to get more tips on Google Classroom and education technology and everything distance learning. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to Teach Blog Travel's email updates because I will be sending out the class code for our Google Classroom crash course very shortly. Thanks for watching. Till next time.